before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. been so so kind to me your fault, still your love fought for me, you have been so, so good to me, when I felt no worse, you paid it all for me, you have been so, so Kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming at me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming at me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming at me. There's no shadow.
built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest phrase. Church, we invite you to sing along with us. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy trust in
see the trees changing colors and the leaves falling to the ground, but we know that the world is changing. And change in life can be hard and difficult, and especially right now in these uncertain times that we are living in. But with the uncertainty of a time 
of a pandemic, we come with a focus. And we know that there is one thing that is certain. And God, that one thing is that your love for us never, ever changes. So God, in the uncertain times, we lift to you because we believe in the power of prayer. We, be- we, we lift to you those who are dealing with illness. Those who, because of the pandemic, have lost their job. We, we lift to you those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. And God, we especially lift up to you today our president and the White House staff. May they find healing and peace. God, may we have unity in our country. May we be focused on your mission, the one mission that you have for the entire world. And God, we say all of this In Jesus, our Savior's name, amen. Well, good morning, everyone. We are so excited for you to be here in worship. We have a really special uh, moment coming up, but I want to just take a minute to welcome you before we do that. So we are really excited to be here in a time of worship. We know that you have walked through these doors or you found us online and you are worshiping with us. And you're here for a reason, so we are, we are excited for you to be here. This is a place where everyone is welcome to be here. Uh, so take a time to, you know, turn to somebody and wave to them or, or, or say hello in the chat comment because uh, this is a great community. Part of our vision is to create a community, and we do, one of the ways we do that is through prayer. So we would love to pray for you. Um, So if you go to sa.church and click on prayers, tell us how we can be praying for you and your family this week. And I know that you will also be praying for this family up here as we share together in the sacrament of holy baptism. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation, and we are given new birth through water and the spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. This morning, we present Sophia Sue Gilsdorf for baptism. Sophia is the child of Tiffany and Eric Gilsdorf. And we are so glad to see you, Sophia. (laughs) God's wisdom, Sophia. Do you, we have questions that we ask of all parents. And church, as they're answering these questions, just remember them for yourselves as well. But do you repent of your sin and accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord? As a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, will you continue to walk in the way that leads to life? And will you nurture Sophia in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace, to profess faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. And do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. And will you welcome and nurture one another in Christian faith and love? With God's help, we will will proclaim proclaim the good good news and and live live according according to the example of Christ. We will be a community of love and forgiveness that all may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for one another that we may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Hi, come here. Hey, why don't you come with me? This is a big day for you. Yes, it is. What name is given this child? Sophia Sue, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Sophia, may you, filled with the Holy Spirit, being born new through water and the Spirit, be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. We welcome little Sophia into our family. 
such a wonderful, beautiful day. Yay, and you did so good. <laughs> awesome. Let's welcome them one more time. Thank you, guys.
good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Bruce Semmert. I'm the lead pastor here. It's just a pleasure to see you all in worship. Now, before I get to my message, I just want to I just want to give a shout out. Yesterday, our church played host to the Great Plains Annual Conference, and we, uh, we hosted the ordination services and commissioning services, and it started yesterday morning, went into the afternoon. And I want to say thanks to Deb McGovern and her greeters and hospitality team for that. I want to say thanks to Bob Jarks, our production coordinator, and all the volunteers, and to our praise team, Jay Shrigley, and all the, vo- where'd they go? They're all, all over the place. I just think, let's say thanks. They just, you should be so proud. So proud. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, it, it, was a, it was a wonderful day of worship. It was two different worship services that were over an hour and a half long each. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, our church was able to serve God and serve the annual conference in one of the high points of any pastor's life. And that's either being commissioned as a pastor or ordained as an elder or a deacon. And so thanks again to all of those who helped out. So, J.R. Uh, J.R. was the kind of person that other folks would describe as hard living. You know that term, hard living? He was a hard living guy. Now, he was about 40 or so when I met him. I was in my late 20s. He worked hard. He drank hard. He only followed kind of he was, you know these kind of people, he, he only followed kind of the laws and the rules that he thought were important to him, and the ones that didn't restrict his life too much, that was that kind of guy he was. He loved to hunt and fish, never bought a license. That was just who he was. Quite honestly, the first time you'd see this guy, he was an intimidating character. He was a hard living man. Hard living, but he had a soft spot for his wife and his kids. And that's how I got to know him. It's actually through his kids. I serve in this little church in a small town in Kansas. And his teenage daughter started coming to our youth group that I led. And they came for a while. And then they started coming to worship. His family didn't go to church. And the daughter started coming. And uh, they decided that they wanted to become Christians. They wanted to go to confirmation class, so they took confirmation class. And uh, they, which meant they needed to be baptized and then come in. And like I say, JR, soft spot for his kids. And so he came to see his kids be baptized and to be confirmed in this little church. It might have been one of the first times he's ever in a church. So he wasn't really church broke. He didn't really know how to act or dress for church. Do you know what I'm saying? So he showed up in church in his Wolverine boots. I don't know if you remember these. These were really popular 30-some years ago. Work jeans, old flannel shirt, and he was wearing a red man tobacco trucker's cap. And he did know, at least, that when you walk into a church, you should take the cap off. And so he walks in, and he takes his cap off, and there's this white band right across the top of his forehead. (laughs) It was weather-beaten face, except he had that cap on all the time. He walks in. Now, this is a tough-looking character, but let me tell you, at that moment, now I'm standing in front. Now, this church is small. The whole church would have fit in the space of just this section of our sanctuary, just a little church. And... uh, so in those kind of churches, when somebody walks in, do you know what everybody does? Everybody hears it. So they all turn around to look. And so they all turned around to look. When J.R. walked in the sanctuary, there he was. He looked scared. This was not his happy place. <laughs> he looked kind of beat. He looked unsure of himself. But he walks in. And like I say, all these people turn around to look at him. And if you've ever wondered what it looks like to see people look down their noses at somebody, you know, over the top of their glasses, that's what they were doing when J.R. walked into the sanctuary. It's a little town. Everybody knew who he was. And just stared at him. Now, I will say, he had to have felt their stare. And he ended up staring too, but not at the people who were staring at him. He stared in wonder and amazement when his two daughters stood in front of that little congregation 
and confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and put their whole trust in his grace. And when they repented of their sins and were baptized, and when they vowed to, with the rest of the congregation, uphold the church through their prayers, their presence, their gifts, their service, and their witness, he just stared in wide-eyed amazement, and there were just tears in this very hard man's eyes. But I decided I needed to talk to JR, get to know him a little bit better. So I took them out to coffee one day in the little cafe. And in a little town like that, the cafe's name is usually just cafe. And so I took him to the cafe. And I found out that he likes to drink a lot of coffee, but he doesn't like to talk much. So it's kind of a hard conversation when you're trying to talk to somebody about important <laughs> things with somebody who doesn't like to talk or can't do it very well. But we talked and we struggled for a while. But the end of the conversation was that something happened to him. And he wanted to accept Christ as his savior. And he wanted to be baptized. And he wanted to join the church too. God, that's wonderful, JR. That's great. So after I had coffee with him, I went and talked to one of the leaders of the church, this old man who, thinking about it now, was my age now, you know what I'm saying, this old man. <laughs> and uh, I told him, I said, you know, I just had coffee with JR. And he wants to be a Christian. He wants to, he wants to confess Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He wants to be baptized. He wants to join the church. And this leader of the church, his wife was with him too, his leader of the church just looked in and said, well, JR is not our kind of people. And his wife said, I'm not really sure we want him in the building. And that 30 plus year old memory came to mind when I was studying the scripture for this week. It's from Matthew 2, beginning at verse 13. Jesus went out again beside the sea. The whole crowd gathered around him, and he taught them. As he was walking along, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he followed him. And as he sat at dinner in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were also sitting with Jesus and his disciples, for many of them followed Jesus. When the scribes and the Pharisees, those are the religious leaders, when the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? And when Jesus heard this, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but the sinners. Jesus wasn't typical. Jesus uh, didn't fit the description of a holy man. He didn't uh, fit the description of a, of, a, of a rabbi, of a teacher, of a religious leader. He just, what he did and the sort of things he said just didn't go along with what that should be like. And it was so different. It was so strange to people, the people that he talked to and hung out with the sort of things that he cared about and did. It was so different that Mark tells us in chapter 321, Mark tells us that when Jesus' family, when Jesus' family heard what he was up to, this is a quote, they went out to restrain him for people were saying, he's gone out of his mind. And some of the religious leaders like the scribes and the Pharisees said that he was possessed by Satan for the sort of things he was doing. Mark 3.22, they said he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of demons he cast out demons. People thought he was crazy. People thought he was possessed. To say the things he said, to hang out with the people he hung out with, to call his disciples the kind of people he called to do the sort of things he did. They thought he was crazy or possessed. Well, why would, why would people think that about Jesus? Because Jesus flipped the script on them. He flipped the script on who holy men should hang out with and who they should talk to and how they're supposed to act. He flipped the script on what a rabbi is supposed to be and do. And one of the Pharisees' sharpest criticisms of Jesus was that he ate with tax collectors and sinners. And not only did he hang out with the wrong sort of people, but he, he seemed to enjoy their company. 
What kind of holy man does that? And they objected. But despite their objections, Jesus went the extra mile in his extreme behavior toward them. So just remember the story we just read from Mark 2. Jesus ate with tax collectors and the sinner Levi. By the way, Levi is the same person as Matthew, as in the Gospel of Matthew, same person. And he called Levi to follow him as the disciple. This tax collector and sinner, Jesus calls him to follow him. And most of the folks did see Levi as a sinner. He was compromised. He had, um, well, that word sinner, by the way, just let me throw this out. That word sinner doesn't necessarily mean somebody who is evil or someone who's a degenerate. Sinner really means somebody who, for whatever reason, is cut off from God or cut off from the people of God. That's what the word sinner really means. Cut off from God or cut off from the people of God for whatever reason. And Levi was cut off from God. He had compromised himself. Uh, he was a tax collector, and as you, I'm sure, well know by now, that uh, a tax collector is somebody who um, compromised with Israel's enemy, Rome, and collected the taxes that fueled their oppression. That's what he had done. So he was ethically challenged. He was. Polite society viewed Levi as worthless. The religious leaders, I'm sure, just assumed that Levi was condemned to hell. So why hang out with a kind of folks that, that good church folks reject? Well, Jesus tells us why. He says it's because those are the very people who need to know that God loves them. The righteous people know that. It's people like Levi who don't. They need to know that God loves them. Everyone else saw this sinner. But Jesus saw a man who was worthy of his time and his life. Because God saw him as a person of infinite worth. Everyone else saw Levi as objectionable. But Jesus knew that Levi was the object of God's love and grace. Levi needed God's love. And Jesus wanted him to receive it. And that's why Jesus says that those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. He says, I've come not to call the righteous, but the sinners. That's why he says that. Jesus flips the script Jesus flipped the script on Levi's life. See, because Jesus befriended him and, and ate with him and called him to follow, Levi went from unworthy to loved. And by the way, that meal wasn't the only meal that Levi ate with Jesus. Remember, he's also Matthew, uh, known as Matthew, the gospel writer. Jesus and Levi were together at the Last Supper. And Levi was there when Jesus was betrayed and arrested. And Levi was there when Jesus was crucified. And Levi was there when Jesus was raised from the dead. And Levi was there when Jesus commissioned all of the disciples to go out into the whole world to spread the good news of God's love and grace and redemption. Jesus flipped the script of Levi's life from unworthy to loved. So remember earlier I was telling you about J.R. Well, let me tell you some of the rest of his story. About a month after I had coffee with him that day, it was my honor to have him stand beside me in front of that little congregation. And I asked him, do you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your full trust in his grace? And he said, I do. I asked him if he repented of his sin, and he said, I do. And I asked him if he would be a faithful follower of Jesus Christ, and he said he would. And I asked him if he would support the ministry and vision of the church that he was now a part of, through his prayers, his presence, his gifts, his service, and his witness, and he said, I will. 
And then I baptized him in front of that little congregation, and everybody was staring at him for a different reason. I baptized him in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he joined the fellowship of God's people that day. He went from unworthy to even be in that space to loved and accepted. And I ran into him a few years ago, and he's still worshiping in that church and helping lead that congregation. Jesus flipped the script on JR's life. He went from feeling unworthy and unwelcomed to knowing without a doubt that God loves him and that he was in the right place. So let me ask you this morning, where are you at in this story? Who are you in this story? Have you ever felt unwelcomed or unloved? If nothing else good happens to you today, I want you to know this, that God loves you. God gave his son Jesus Christ for you. And you are welcome here as a part of God's family that we call St. Andrew's United Methodist Church. God loves you. God gave his son for you, and you are welcome here. Let Jesus flip the script of your life. Let Jesus take you from feeling worthless and unwelcomed to fully loved and knowing you belong here. If you'd like to know about more about God's love in Jesus Christ, here's my invitation to you. Email me personally at the address you see on the screen. Bemert at St. Andrews Omaha.net. You email me and I'll get in touch with you just as fast as I possibly can and we'll start a conversation. So that's an invitation. If you want to celebrate that you are welcome here at this church, if you'd like to find out more about what it means to, to be a member of a church like ours, where everyone is loved and welcome, I, I just invite you to go to sa.church. It's our website, sa.church. And you'll find a, a, a button that says connect. And you click that button and you'll go to a page that says let's start a conversation. Just fill out some information. You get that information in. Hit send and we'll contact you just as fast as we can so we can have that conversation. God loves you. God gave his son for you. And you are most assuredly welcome here. Let me pray for us. Lord, our God, we give you thanks that, that Jesus welcomes folks like us, calls us to follow him, calls us into a community of faith like St. Andrew's. And we pray, Lord, our God, that you would help us to be as welcoming as Jesus that you would help us to follow hard after Jesus the way Levi did. Lord, our God, open our hearts to receive your love and grace today and open our hearts to the good news that we are all, every one of us, welcome here. In the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, today is uh, World Communion Sunday, which is a pretty special and cool day that we are about to uh, uh, do this amazing sacrament, the, something that Jesus himself passed down to us. And we are going to do that with uh, people around the world, virtually meeting, virtually meeting in person. So if you're worshiping with us online, go grab a, a juice or bread or a cracker or water. Um, if you are here and you didn't receive uh, the cup, raise your hand and an usher will uh, bring you bring you one. So there's a couple people over on the side. And all are welcome to receive communion. Uh, this is the Lord's table, and if you are here, you are, you are to able to receive communion. And just so you know that there's two little flaps on here. So the top flap is the, the bread, the wafer part, and then the next flap is the juice. 
Well, Christ, our Lord, invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Jesus is our host, and he welcomes all of us to join in. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of power and might, and might heaven and earth are, are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor. He proclaimed release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. He freed the oppressed and announced the kingdom of God. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. Through his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You freed us from slavery to sin and death and gave us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Jesus is with us until the end of time. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. By your Spirit, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ, and the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. We are one in Jesus. Take and eat. And take and drink. us join together with one voice saying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. And give, give us this day our daily, daily bread. bread. And forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against, against us. us. And lead, and lead us, us not, not into temptation, temptation but, deliver but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom and the power and the, power and the glory forever. forever. Amen. 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 What a beautiful day. Um, we, being part of St. Andrew's is a great thing. And we have this great mission and, and vision that is given to us from God, and there's a lot of ways that you can be part of that mission and vision. So he, check this out, a few things we have going on. We're so happy you chose to join us in worship today, and we hope you've enjoyed your time with us. We're glad you're here. 
Kidman Worship is back for kindergarten through fifth graders. Elementary students are invited to join us in the Family Life Center during our 10 a.m. service on Sundays for Kidman Worship. We are taking safety precautions like temperature screenings, washing hands, and requiring masks. We also ask kids to bring a throw blanket or beach towel to sit on. If you aren't ready to resume in-person Kidman worship, you can still access the videos and lessons online via the church homepage. The weather is changing and it's clear that fall and winter temperatures will be here before you know it. We want to ensure kids in our community have coats to stay warm. You can help by donating a new or gently used coat for students at our partner school, Howard Kennedy. Any use sizes ranging from extra small to extra large will be put to great use. Coats can be left on the donation racks at the office entrance and in the rotunda. Thanks for giving the gift of warmth to these kids. Planning for the 2020 St. Andrews Auction is well underway. This event is an annual fundraising event held each year in support of our mission and ministry work at St. Andrews. And all are invited to participate in some way. One way is to purchase tickets for the virtual fundraising event at sa.church. Another way you can support the event is by donating an item to be used in our silent auction. You can find more details on how to make a donation via our Amazon wish list and our weekly update email. Your support will ensure this event is a success and you can continue to offer support in our community. Again, we're so happy that you joined us today and we want you to know that you're always welcome here. Please join us again as we seek to love God, know Jesus, and serve others. Like I said, we have a lot going on and it's because of your gracious generosity. So thank you for your gifts that you, um, you know, right? We give back um, to God what God has given us. And if you'd like a, a chance to give to be part of what we are doing here at St. Andrews, we would love for you to go to sa.church, click on the give button. You can gi give that way. You can give by texting give to the number on your screen. Um, if you're here, you can drop it off in the boxes on your way out. Or if you're worshiping with us online, you can um, uh, drop it off at the church or mail in a, a check. Thank you for making a difference, for being the church, for being a part of what is happening here at St. Andrews. It's truly remarkable to see what is going on. And as you go from this place to whatever your week looks like this week, may you be reminded that, that Jesus can change your story. So, so go from here with peace, knowing that whatever your story is, is that God is with you and God is calling you to the purpose that you have been created for. So go in peace and we will see you next weekend. Oh, hero, oh, heaven, you